So now we will go on and import some data into ESEC. So we will go to the folder on the desktop where we put the files from the workshop. We have four different bed files, four different aligned chipset files at our disposal in this from this workshop zip file. And we can just click here, then it will import all of them. Oh, we, we get this import wizard where we have some uh, information about the columns of the files. And in this case, ESEC just guesses correctly on where to find uh, the names for the chromosomes. That is what is entered here. The start coordinate, the end coordinate, and the strand information. The strand information is hidden, yeah, put in column 6. There's also some information about um, how the strand information is coded. Now they're called plus and minus. They could also be called something differently. If they look differently up here, then you should probably change that accordingly. Um, and then there is some information here that uh, I suggest you don't really change uh, as a new user. One of the things which are good to know perhaps is uh, that ESEC by default will uh, filter for unique reads to avoid PCR uh, artifacts. If you're working with small genomes such as yeast or bacterial genomes, then you might favor from disabling this. But for people working with mammalian genomes, then I suggest that you use this by default and leave it untouched. So we'll just click OK and use the default settings for all of these four files. And once we have done that, then ESEC will start to import the files. You can see the progress here. It does take a bit of time. So while it is doing that, then we can start to import some of the region sets. Now we could try to import some CPG islands here. And ESEC will now need some help here to figure out what is what in this file. So the first column uh, contains some numbers from the from from the CPG islands. Um, the second contains chromosomal information, the name of the chromosome. And ESEC has correctly guessed that this column contains that. But ESEC cannot, in this case, figure out where to find the um, the start position, which is in column 3 and 4. So we will help ESEC, telling that the start coordinate is here, the end coordinate is here, by clicking here. And then ESEC will also suggest to import the remaining columns as parameters that you can use for later analysis. Uh, I suggest that we do that. That will allow you to visualize some of the features in the f the f this file uh, later on. So now that the data sets and the region set has finished importing, then it would be a good idea to save the data as a session file. That's a single file containing all the data sets, the gene sets, and the region sets, as well as potential plots, if you have some, uh, and auto-generate description, as a single file. That will cut down the time it takes to import the data a lot and make it easier for you to find your way through your data. Saving a session is, is done up here in the session um, session area. And you just click Save, and then you can save it. And we'll just call it Test. It might take some seconds. The more data you have, the longer time it takes. But in this case, it was very fast. And the sessions, they can be loaded as any other file, a Word file, PowerPoint file, or things like that, and make it easy for you to go back to the analysis and the stage you were at at a certain time. We'll do it later again once we have created some plots, save it as a session together with underlying data. So now we have a region set, and we have four different uh, data sets. These are not big data sets, they have been downsampled, so they don't take up that much space and are fast to down be downloaded. If you click on the region set here, then you can see some information about these CPG islands. You have the coordinates over here. You can browse them one by one. And um, we can also, now that we have a region set and some data sets, then we can start to make the first plot. I suggest that we make a heat map here 